Hello, my name is Gwen Sexton and I'm going to take you through this short tutorial about how you might use iPerf to do some load testing or throughput testing on a network. There's a small number of slides and some examples to uh, explain what's going on. So we'll just begin by um, asking the question, what is iPerf? Um, well, iPerf um, is uh, a command line tool. Um, so you've got to open the uh, command window in Windows to make this work um, for generating um, network traffic. Um, you can generate network traffic across the physical uh, wired connection if you have one or the wireless connection. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, it's a pretty flexible package um, and you can generate either TCP or UDP packets depending on what you want to test. Um, and there's a great deal of flexibility in terms of how you might actually deliver these packets. Um, you can set things like the overall bit rate and the packet payload size um, and a few other parameters can be controlled too. Um, the, using a packet generator is much better than using um, something like um, an FTP download to uh, test a network uh, connection. Although there are merits in using FTP downloads and file um, transfers, um, but the, the beauty of using iPerf is that you can control the traffic a, a, in a much better way than uh, simply doing a file transfer. Um, as I mentioned, iPerf is um, a command line tool um, and uh, it's, there are not too many uh, options and there's a help system there available if you forget what the commands are. But if you're really desperate and just absolutely hate command line stuff, um, there's a tool called JPerf, which um, only operates at the moment with iPerf version 2 um, and not iPerf per version 3. Um, uh, JPerf provides um, an effect a, a GUI to iPerf um, and uh, gives you a few boxes to uh, fill in and a few um, uh, menus that you can select to, to make um, uh, iPerf work in a particular way. But the core tool behind JPerf is still iPerf. Um, and this tutorial is really just looking at how we might use iPerf rather than just JPerf. So how does um, iPerf actually work? Um, under normal circumstances, um, you would deploy iPerf on um, two machines. On one, it runs as a client um, and on the other as a server. And you can see in the diagram in this slide, on the left hand side, we've got iPerf running as a client and iPerf running as a server. Um, under normal circumstances, um, the link between the devices is tested by pushing traffic from the client to the server. So the server is the receiver of the traffic. Um, what I would recommend um, if you do read other tutorials uh, about using iPerf, um, then I would say that iPerf 3 works slightly differently to iPerf 2. Um, and um, one of the um, noticeable differences is that in iPerf 2, you don't have to, sorry, iPerf 3, you don't have to explicitly um, set up UDP mode, whilst in iPerf 2, you do have to do this um, only for the server side. Um, so there are small differences, but you'll see that uh, um, explained in the examples that um, I've got on the next slide. An example of how to run iPerf on both the server and on the client. So looking towards the top of the slide in the first instance, we have the command iPerf3, which runs iPerf for us, and the command line option minus S, which forces iPerf to operate in server mode. We need a client as well. So looking further down the slide, just following my pointer down, we can see the command iperf3, which fires up iperf on another PC, on the client in this particular case. Um, minus C um, tells iperf to run in client mode. We then need to tell um, uh, iperf the IP address of where the server is sitting. In my case, I've got 192.168.1.137, but this is almost entirely uh, down to your system. Um, following that, in this particular case, I've got iperf um, sending out UDP packets. So I have to tell it it's sending out UDP packets. So I do that by uh, providing the minus U option. 
and following that we have to tell iperf um, to uh, well this is an option we have to tell iperf the um, data payload size and in this particular case we indicate that but with the minus l um, option um, followed by a number which tells us the number of bytes in the payload so in this particular case we're going to send udp packets with 100 bytes in the um, in the actual data payload for the udp packet so here we have um, uh, an example of um, uh, iperf running with uh, those parameters and um, it gives us a, an idea of what we actually see so um, at the left hand side of the screen we're seeing that command uh, line to run iperf in, in the same manner that we saw in the previous slide so we're firing out um, udp packets from the client um, and then we see some information about the how the data is being sent at the right hand side we can see the setup once again of our um, uh, command and um, we can see what the server is receiving or what the server thinks it's receiving at the other end of the connection um, and at the at the bottom of the screen we can see um, summary data and all of this data can be used effectively to uh, get a, a clearer understanding of how the uh, data uh, that we're pushing across the network actually is received across the network. Um, the data that's presented by iperf on its uh, success or failure indeed um, of uh, the data transfer is, is very useful but it's also useful to um, take a look at how the data is either being sent or possibly more interestingly being received at the server end too particularly for transmitting udp packets if you remember for UD, the way udp operates um, UDP works in effect as a connectionless system and if there are packets not received there's no attempt to retransmit um, so don't assume that all the packets that you might be pushing out across a link are actually going to be received um, of course um, you'll find that iperf actually reports the number of packets received and can tell you if there are packets dropped but we can look at that um, a little bit more closely and more carefully using Wireshark um, so I, I, all I've done was to um, just run Wireshark up and um, uh, collect um, the, the data and I'm just showing you one packet that's being received at the server end. Um, there's a couple of things that are worthy of note, um, particularly if you're doing um, testing of, of bandwidths of systems. Um, the iperf specification um, suggests that the payload is 100 bytes and indeed it is 100 bytes and you can see this from the um, wireshark dump here and it is length 100 so this is reporting this quite accurately but what you have to bear in mind is that the data that is sent across the link is a lot more than 100 bytes um, and you can clearly see this window that i'm pointing to now uh, where the, the blue and in this case just this yellow because the mouse has been selected at that point um, uh, is, th this blue data is the 100 bytes and we have an awful lot of other bytes as well that we're transmitting across the link now this is um, only showing you the, um, the the bytes on the wire as it were so this is the these are the bytes received at the server end if you're doing a wireless connection you're going to have even more bytes of data um, in addition to the payload so you do need to be careful um, to think about well how much traffic is actually going across the link um, and at what point do you want to measure it in this case um, our 100 bytes is purely UDP payload but there is more data going across that particular link that you may or may not need to take into account
Um, Wireshark is also useful um, to allow us to take a look to see how that data is delivered over a period of time. Um, and the typical delivery period is around about 10 seconds. You can modify that and change the amount of data that you want to deliver over those 10 seconds. Um, but this is an indication of how many packets uh, per second are being delivered across that particular link. So that's it. Thank you for watching this brief presentation. I hope it's been uh, useful for you. Um, so we've covered a few things. We've covered a very basic introduction uh, and operation of iPerf itself. We've prov provided an example of how you might generate some UDP packets, and we've shown how Wireshark can be used to help analyze that data throughput. So thanks very much for watching.